when we take a look at the Phase 3 clinical trials of dutasteride, titled, quote, Efficacy, Safety, and Tolerability of Dutasteride 0.5 mg once daily in male patients with male pattern hair loss, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled Phase 3 study, unquote. The study evaluated the efficacy of 0.5 mg of dutasteride against placebo in men aged 18 to 49 years with male pattern hair loss. 2.5 mg of dutasteride was also tested as well. The primary endpoint was to measure the change in hair count per centimeter squared from baseline to six months. The results were promising. The dutasteride group demonstrated a statistically significant mean increase in 12.2 per square centimeter, an 8.2% increase, while the placebo group only saw a mean increase of 4.7 per squared centimeter, a 3.2% increase. Although both groups saw an increase in hair count after three and six months, the difference between them became statistically significant only at the six month mark. This unexpected increase in the placebo group, especially in the third month mark remains unexplained, although it's postulated that seasonal factors might be at play. So this goes without saying, yes, your hair sheds at varying times and you get various waves of growth, right? And this also can occur in placebo. So some people may think, oh, well, my hair is looking better. I had a haircut. Maybe I'm not losing my hair after all. Well, maybe you just got over a temporary shed and you still do have androgenetic alopecia. Maybe your hair just got longer and you grew it out. There are still these other sort of confounding variables that for some people, it's kind of like cope. They don't want to accept that they're losing hair. But in reality, when you look at the aggregate of the data, when it comes to this particular study and other studies, the increase in total area hair count and terminal hair counts as well goes to show how different the treatment group is compared to the placebo. And as you can see, 12.2 per centimeter squared versus 4.7 per centimeter squared is vastly different, right? That means dutasteride, the dutasteride group, is actually doing something. But anyway, moving on. Comparatively, dutasteride's inhibition of both type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase offers a theoretical edge over finasteride, which only targets type 2. This advantage is also underscored by the fact that dutasteride is significantly more potent in inhibiting both 5-AR types. And also, dutasteride is seen to reduce serum DHT by over 90%, compared to finasteride's 70% reduction. These findings suggest that dutasteride might be a superior option for male pattern hair loss treatment, also known as androgenetic alopecia. So here, again, 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride was superior to 5 milligrams of finasteride in improving hair counts. However, with 2.5 milligram of dutasteride, it was observed to have a slightly greater effect on hair growth rate. That is, 2.5 milligram of dutasteride showcased a faster recovery in terms of hair miniaturization. And again, that's primarily due to the scalp DHT levels on 2.5 milligram of dutasteride. If you significantly can suppress scalp DHT levels, the likelihood of hair regrowth as well as the reversal of much of the miniaturized hair is greater. But this could also mean you're going to have a lot of shedding, which people complain about while they're on dutasteride. You could have a significant shed. Both factors increased dose-dependently with dutasteride. Dutasteride at 0.5 milligram significantly increased hair count and width in a 2.54 centimeter diameter, and it also improved hair growth compared to 5 milligram finasteride. So like I said earlier in this video, right, how they're using 5 milligrams of finasteride, which is typically the ProScar dose. And many of us who use finasteride are using the Propecia dose, the 1 milligram finasteride. In the phase 2 and phase 3, and also the randomized comparison of 0.02 milligram to 0.5 dutasteride versus 5 milligram finasteride study that I mentioned earlier on, the Walter Gubin Harcha et al. study, you can see that ProScar is being used in this. Five milligram finasteride is being used in this. And notably, there are going to be people that are concerned who may think, well, I have to use five milligram of finasteride to get that 39 or 40% decrease in scalp DHT. Now, there are some you know, varying studies that say five milligrams of finasteride reduces scalp DHT by something like 80% which in those particular studies, if I recall correctly, they're short-term in terms of it being sustained, long-term duration when it's observed, it tends to be that scalp DHT levels are suppressed 
by between 30 to 40 percent. This is on five milligrams of finasteride. However, other studies also show that one milligram or finasteride has been shown to have no difference on scalp DHT and serum DHT compared to five milligram of oral finasteride. This means that one milligram oral finasteride has the equivalent suppression of scalp DHT and serum DHT as five milligram oral finasteride. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but I just want to reiterate so people get that in their head. So when it comes to finasteride, there is no sort of dose dependency, meaning the more finasteride you use past one milligram, the greater the results, as you would see in dutasteride. There is, that just doesn't exist, okay? And there's a nice review on finasteride compiled by the Stats Pearls online textbook from PubMed. The article is titled, quote, finasteride, unquote, and it's written by authors Patrick M. Zito, Carlisle G. Bistas, and Kieran Said. And their affiliations are with the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, that being Zito, for Bistas, Medical University of the Americas, and for Said, Holy Cross Hospital. So I'll leave that in the description. Probably, you know, hopefully put some screenshots of that article in the video. So I just want people to know that. Don't freak out. If you're taking one milligram oral finasteride, don't think you have to take five milligram finasteride to get what I'm talking about, at least what these studies compare, that sort of scalp DHT suppression between 30 to 40%. That's not the case. One milligram oral finasteride is also equivalent to five milligram oral finasteride in terms of scalp DHT suppression and also serum DHT suppression. <laughs>